The King's Gambit is one of the oldest openings in chess. It's a very aggressive opening, a very sharp opening. Uh, it was used extensively in the olden times. Nowadays, it's not played so much at the top level uh, because it leads to complicated positions and some players consider it unsound to white. But as a player who's learning chess, who is getting to that uh, level of good player, it's very important that you learn King's Gambit and learn how to play it and understand the uh, moves or the ideas in the King's Gambit. Because it's such a uh, important and aggressive openings to learn. So uh, here goes e4, e5, f4. This is the King's Gambit. Now white is giving up a pawn. And what is white's compensation for that pawn? White will get the center with b4. White will get his pieces out faster. And there will be pressure on f7. After castling, the rook will be already looking at f7. So this is the reason why King's Gambit is played. The main reason is the sender. Like after pawn takes and after white gets d4 in, white will have complete control of the sender. White will hope to take back the pawn at some time and he will have more active pieces looking at f7. Now, the first thing we should understand is if black decides to chicken out and not accept the King's Gambit, what will happen? What will happen is, let's say black plays a simple move like d6, then white gets a very good position. For example, knight f3, knight c6, and then you can directly go d4. Pawn takes and knight takes. Now, this is a very nice position. Bishop c4 is going to come, castling is going to happen, or even knight c3, bishop e2 castles. So, this position will be good for white without having even sacrificed any pawn. White is getting good control of the sender and more active pieces and action on f7. So that's what will happen if black declines it. So the best way for black to continue is to accept it. Now, white can play d4 or bishop, bishop c4, but then queen h4 will come. If you play more like d4 directly, then queen h4 will be a little unpleasant for white. So that is why after black accepts the gambit, white has to play knight f3, stopping queen h4. Now white is preparing d4, bishop c4 and bishop f4 and then castles. That's white's plan. If black plays normally here, white will take the center and white will recapture the pawn, and everything will be perfect for white. So black has to be active here and he has to go g5. This is the best way for black to continue in this line. So knight f3, g5, black is threatening g4 and queen h4. Those are the threats. Now in this position, there are uh, different ways for white to continue. The simplest way is to stop g4 and that is to go h3. This is not something I would recommend, but yeah, this would, uh, this would stop the immediate threat and then white can continue with d4, bishop, c4, castles. And at some, on some day, you can hope to recapture this pawn of this pawn. The other good option, there are two other good options. One is h4. This is uh, the simplest option, simplest good option for white. The point is, if black takes, white can recapture right now if he wants, but he can also play a d4 and recapture this pawn. He can capture one of these two pawns. The thing about King's Gambit is, I know that the position looks complicated. It is complicated. White is sacrificing a pawn, weakening his king a little bit, but black is also not quite happy. Black king will not be uh, happy on uh, e8. And uh, there will be pieces attacking f7. King will be under pressure. So white is basically forcing black to embrace the uh, complications of the position. So white is selling black. We, I'm going to play an aggressive game. You will have to up your game and meet me. Otherwise, you will get blown off the board. Now, after this, bishop takes pawn or knight takes pawn would be the way to continue. Both pawns would probably fall. So black players will not take. Black players will push. Now again, white can just go knight e5 and recapture this pawn. This is one option. And if he goes h5, then you can just go d4 and recapture this pawn. So that's one option. The other option is more aggressive. It is knight g5. The idea is after h6, white is going to sacrifice his piece over here and then play queen g4. So white will be down a, down a piece and he'll be up a pawn. But king is not safe. Bishop c4 d4 castles. So these are the moves that white wants to play in this position. 
So let's go back. So that is one way of playing the uh, playing the king's gambit after knight f3. So after black accepts the gambit, knight knight f3, g5, and now h4. One option. The second one, which we already discussed, is a similar one, but it's not a great option because you will not get to recapture g5 easily. The third option is the most aggressive one, the sharpest line in King's Gambit, which is called the Musio Gambit, M-U-Z-I-O. And that is Bishop C4, completely ignoring this threat. White's plan is after G4, White is just going to castle, giving up a piece, sacrificing a piece. But White is looking at F7. Three pieces are going to look at F7. On a good day, White will play D4 and Bishop takes F4. And then there'll be too much pressure on F7. So this is not an easy line to play against for Black. Black has to be very careful. He has to manage his defenses properly. If Black plays something careless, like say Knight C6, I can just go D3 and then recapture on F4 and F7 will be under pressure. So there aren't that many good moves for Black to defend here. The only two good ways is to either play Queen F6 or Bishop H6 in any order. So after queen f6, <coughs> black is telling white, you can take the pawn, but then there'll be an exchange of queens. And if white goes d3, there was a threat of queen d4, by the way, four on the bishop and king. If white goes d3, black will now go bishop h6. Again, telling white, if you want to take, you can take, but then there'll be an exchange of bishops and probably queens. So white will ignore this. White will not take this immediately. He'll play knight c3, threatening knight d5, and the game goes on. So this is the Musio Gambit. White is down a piece, but Black's pieces are not active. Black's king will never be safe. That is why people play the Musio. Now, let us let me show you another line. So after uh, the Musio Gambit, Queen takes f3, Queen f6. There is a line called double Musio. That's even more aggressive. That is e5, Queen takes, and then Bishop f7, sacrificing two pieces. Now white plays d4. Point is after queen takes, bishop e3. So if you want to really surprise your opponent, this is the way to go, but you're sacrificing two pieces. The point is there'll be pressure on the f5. If, if black goes ahead and takes here, then black is busted. Like black would simply play, I mean white would simply play something like queen f4 check. And now the king is totally under pressure. You cannot go queen some anywhere because of queen. Sorry, queen c4. And then the black queen is gone. And what are the moves there? If you play king e7 or let's say knight f6, I can just play bishop d4. This is also lost. So it's not easy for black to play. So black should not take on b2. He has to go back. Then white will simply play bishop f4. And now still the f file is open. Let's say black plays a simple move. I can go queen h5. After queen g6, there is no other good move. If you play king e7, then bishop g5 wins a queen. If you play king g7, then I can try bishop d2. Attacking the queen and then threatening bishop c3. So uh, this is another line in the Musio Gambit, which is called the double Musio. So, <clears throat> so just to summarize, the king's gambit is played with aggression in mind. And after, e after sorry, let's go back. So after e4, e5, f4, black's best option is to take it. If you decline it, white will have a good position. So black takes and now knight f3, g5. Black also has to play a complicated game. Black cannot tell like I want a quiet game. Then black will be under a lot of pressure. g5 threatening g4. Here white has two good, two good options. One is h4 and the other is a Musio Gambit with bishop c4. There's a third option which is similar, but it's not um, ambitious. It's not playing for a win. H3 is also there, but that will be a quiet game. So, these are the ways the King's Gambit can be played. There are many more lines to analyze. There, is, there are even ways you can decline the King's Gambit by doing a counter gambit. And that is after E4, E5, F4 and D5. Black goes for a counter gambit. This is called called Peer uh, Counter Gambit. There are many lines to analyze. But it's very important that you play this opening and understand how to attack, how to play a complicated game.
because trust me the game will be complicated no matter how black it plays the king's gambit will, will lead to exciting and complicated positions so i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you enjoy the opening in this coming month